Welcome back. This is the second video in how to use your dynamic comb penetrometer made by Kessler Soils Engineering Products Inc. So we're going to take a few minutes and go through the case of a typical K100 dynamic comb penetrometer that we produce. All of them, all the K100s, are delivered in Pelican cases. Now the Pelican cases protect it from the elements, it's good storage, it's shippable, it, it provides the ultimate protection for your DCP and its components. The other thing, it, you know, it has the uh, gasketed um, opening as well as the uh, valve, the pressure relief valve for atmosphere, as well as the, the clasp to keep it closed, and you also can uh, secure it, padlock it, if you need to padlock your DCP locked. It has actually four places that you can put padlocks on. Okay, the other thing that's handy about the case is you have three handles. You have the main handle in the front here, and you have end handles on both ends, including the end that has wheels. Typically, the typical weight for a dynamic comb penetrometer kit from Kessler is, runs a little under 75 pounds. You know, it can be even down less than that in the 60s, but typically up to 75 pounds. So the wheels come in very handy in moving the cases around. Okay, so let's open up our case. This is our M kit here. And we have the uh, soft foam in the top to hold everything in place. You have the, uh, the kit that has the molded foam, has outlines for specific pieces of equipment. It also has uh, extra storage locations. It has a long cutout in the back here that you can put extra drive rods in if you, if you have extra drive rods. It also has extra pockets for more disposable comb boxes, adapter boxes, and so forth. It also has a box that can either double for the for the uh, tools or if you're using a mag ruler which will fit inside this case also on its on the DCP you have the mag ruler printer that can go in that pocket also alright so with your kit every kit comes with the user's manual and the CD in the first video we went through the contents of these to give you an overview of what's provided in these documents so every kit has that Okay, to start into the components, the first component is the lower assembly. The lower assembly should work. It wouldn't. Well, were you going in or out? You, were you going the right direction? I'm trying to. Well, it won't go out any further. Damn. Sorry, I can edit this out. Okay. Okay, we're going to go to the first major component is the lower assembly. When you purchase a kit from Kessler, it will come assembled if you, if you have one that has a vertical scale. The vertical scale is this component here. It has a tenths reading, inches and tenths, as well as millimeters on the outside here. The other, the other part of this assembly is the upper attachment up here at the top and the lower foot or lower attachment. And all of this is attached to the drive rod. The drive rod has two inch increment rings for measuring if you don't have the vertical scale. It also has a quick disconnect cap at the top and at the bottom in this case we have the um, You can't talk. All right, I'm not. All right. All right, so we're going to go through the parts of the kit now. The first major piece that we have here is the lower assembly. It comprises of the vertical scale, 
which has a measuring side in tenths of inches and also millimeters on the front here. Also included in holding the vertical scale with, to the drive rod is the upper attachment, which is up here. And then we also have the lower attachment, or foot as we call it, down here at the bottom that holds the vertical scale in place. Along with this, we have a drive rod. The drive rod in this has two inch increment rings to be able to measure if, you're, if you don't have the vertical scale. Also at the end of the drive rod in this case, we have the hardened point, the reusable point for testing, performing tests. You can perform up to 250 tests typically with a hardened point before it, it's worn down and it needs replacement. Okay. The other feature of the drive rod is the cap at the top that acts as the adapter for the quick disconnect that's shown in the manual. Okay. In each kit, we have tools that are provided. Okay. There's a two, you should receive two combination wrenches, 9 sixteenths, and one Allen wrench with a ball hex head on, on one end of it. Okay. These tools are used to uh, perform maintenance as well as to change out parts on your DCP. Included in the toolkit bag is uh, light oil or 3 in 1 oil, and we'll talk about that during the maintenance section. You also have the uh, quick, the pins for the quick disconnect and connect uh, feature of the DCP, of the Kessler DCP. And you have cotter pins to for keepers to keep the pins in place while you're performing your test. And we'll show more of this during the testing or the uh, data collection uh, video. But to close out with the tools, every hardened point, adapter, which I'll show you in a minute, and drive rod come with flat spots on the ends. These flat spots allow you to change out hardened points. And we're going to zoom in on this so you get a better view of, of the flat spot. You got to zoom in. You're zooming out. Pull the other way, the other way. Other way it goes the... Okay. Got it. Got it. Okay, we're going to zoom in on this and take a look at the, the details here. So you have the flat spots that help you in tightening and loosening the hardened points and the adapters. For the Allen wrench, there's two uses for the Allen wrenches. One of the uses is for removing the upper attachment from the drive rod. If you're changing out drive rods, you use the Allen wrench and, combination, and a combination wrench to tighten or loosen. Okay, what, one of the uses for the Allen wrenches is to remove the upper attachment from the drive rod. If you're switching out drive rods, this is you'll have to loosen and remove your upper attachment, and you do that through the Allen wrench and uh, and one of the box wrenches. So if we do that, we're going to zoom in here so you get a good view of how that configuration works. where you can loosen them up or tighten them up uh, depending upon what you're doing. Later we'll show you the other use for the Allen wrench which is removing the donut ring on the two part hammer to get you down to the 10.1 pound hammer. We'll do that in a moment. Alright, the other major component on your kit is your upper assembly that includes the hammer the handle that you're going to use to hold the DCP upright and vertical during testing, and the anvil section down here below the hammer, that the hammer impacts when you drop it. 
Now I'm going to I'll turn the hammer over and show you the end, so you get a. We're going to zoom in here, so that you get a good view of the key that holds the donut on to the uh, the dual mass hammer. Okay. To remove, to make your hammer down to the 10.1 hammer, what you want to do is loosen up that key. You got to hold it. Once you get the the screw loose enough, you can go to the ball end of your hex wrench and spin it around and spin it out. And it'll come out very quickly. You want to keep this in a good location. Typically we recommend putting it in the case so that you don't lose it. After you remove the key, then you can pull the donut up, up and over the handle, and put it aside while you go out and perform testing with the 10.1 hammer. So when would you use this hammer? You use this hammer typically when you have very soft soil. That if you, with the standard hammer, the 17.6 pound hammer, is driving your, is driving your drive rod down four inches, six inches, or more at a time. You know, your very soft soils, peak conditions, stuff like that would, would require you to go to this lighter hammer so that you can determine your layers. That's, and that's the primary purpose of going to the, the lighter hammer in weaker soils is that it will give you a better differentiation between the, where the layers are getting a little stronger or a little weaker as you uh, perform the 36 inch or 30 inch test. Okay, so those are your major components. The other parts that we need to talk about in the kit that comes with every kit are adapters. We're going to zoom in here on a box that shows the adapter. Okay, each box will, if you have multiple adapters, there will be the quantity on the box. So inside, an adapter looks like this. This is what your typical adapter looks like. Threaded on one end to thread into your drive rod, has a, um, an indent flat end on the other for the O-ring, this is the O-ring, to go around that and onto that adapter to hold the disposable cone in place. The disposable cones look like this. They come 25 to a box. When you order an M kit, you get tw you get four boxes or 100 disposable cones. These are single-use cones. When you drive the cone into the soil at down at the bottom of your test at 36 inches, this cone will pull off of the adapter and stay in the soil. Now it's it's made tight to keep it on there while you're driving because if you hit a if you ha have a stone or something on the side of it it won't knock it off. So it's very secure. As you can tell when I was putting this one on I was twisting it as I put it on. That is uh, one of the techniques to get it on there. The other technique is to have your adapter on the drive rod where you can grip the drive rod more and, and to be able to twist it on there. The other, a little tip also, is to keep your gasket, that little O-ring, in good condition or better condition to put a drop of the 3-in-1 oil on those O-rings. After you roll them onto the adapter, just put a drop on there, rub it with your fingers or a paper towel to take the excess off, and that will keep the O-ring from getting torn up e as easily. Every disposable cone box comes with another O-ring. So an O-ring should last you about 25 uh, disposable cones per, per use and then re you'll have to replace it. Here's a box of the disposable cones. So this concludes the kit components 
for a Kessler Soils Engineering Products Inc. dynamic comb penetrometer. The next video we're going to do and that you're going to see, and this concludes the kit component video for the Kessler Soils Engineering Products Inc. dynamic comb penetrometer. The next video will cover the safety precautions that you need to be aware of to be able to safely use your dynamic comb penetrometer in the field and also to keep you safe in the field while you're using it. Thank you.